Well, it is a delight to get to chat with the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred. Thanks for spending the time. Really glad to be here. Really glad to be here. Nice night here in Chicago. A little brisk, but uh, happy to be in Chicago. How about this? Four first place teams in the same city here in Chicago tonight. Unbelievable. I think it's actually somebody told me it's the first time in the history of the game, and I believe that. Uh, but more importantly, you know, I was coming in from the airport today, and I was listening to talk radio. I'm a big talk radio guy. And just the buzz about baseball here in Chicago is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Let me ask you a question that a lot of people are talking about, and I know you addressed it earlier, but our viewers didn't get a chance to see it. About expansion, I know you feel like Bud Selig felt the internationalization of the game is great. Where do you see expansion going? Well, let me say this. Um, I, I think baseball is a growth business, and growth businesses tend to expand. Um, for us, I think there's a couple of things that we need to get through. We need to get a new labor deal. We have a couple of franchises, Tampa and Oakland, that need to get their stadium situations resolved before we move ahead. Once we're past that, I would love to see us um, expand. Um, I think there are international locations. My personal sort of front runner would be either Montreal or Mexico City where we could go play on a sustained basis and I think it would be great for the growth of the game. I think Mexico City in particular would be new ground for us obviously. One and two Eric Johnson to Hanley Ramirez who thought he had struck out it's still two strikes that you get to bat I think they haven't changed the rules <laughs> since right. you've been here Hanley That's started right. walking to the dugout. We are trying to move things along but it's still a three strike thing. <laughs> what do you think about the pace of the game right now as it stands. You know I, I think we made real progress last year we kind of reversed a trend of creeping up in terms of the length of the game. But it is um, it's an issue where you need to be constantly vigilant remind the players remind the people that are playing the game to focus on the pace of the game. Um, I think we've slipped a little bit uh, this year uh, partially because of the weather when it's this cold everything takes a little bit longer. So we're really going to be focused on the topic as we move into the warmer weather. So two and two on Ramirez instant replay has been a topic quite a bit in baseball. What do you right. think of replay as it stands right now and what tweaks might you look at down the line. Well fundamentally I'm a fan of replay. I think it responds to a desire of our fans to use technology to get important calls right. Um, the difficulty is it goes the wrong direction in terms of the pace of the play of the game on the field. So we have to make sure and these are the two topics we really monitor. How much are we doing it. How often do we have challenges and how long do those challenges take and we're watching both of those topics um, right now and I think during the offseason we may look at some changes to try to make it certainly faster if we can use technology to do that and maybe even some changes to limit the number of times it happens in a game. We had some rule changes before this last offseason right. one was to play at the plate. You guys tweaked right. that and I think you tweaked it for uh, the best for all of baseball because we're not seeing the controversy we saw. Right. The play at second base now is one that you've implemented this year. Right. Do you see any tweaks to that going down the road? We're in the same period of transition with that rule that we had with respect to the home plate rule. Um, I think that the last two weeks as opposed to the very beginning of the season I think the calls have been more consistent. Ramirez leaves the yard for the second time this series and it's 3-1 to the Red Sox with the lead. I think as the replay officials have had more opportunity to apply the rule there's been a lot more consistency and again it's important to bear in mind the most important thing is we're making the game safer and a little period of adjustment is a small price to pay in order to make the game safer. So 3 1 Red Sox with the lead. We're joined by the commissioner of baseball, Rob Manfred. We've seen a lot of shifts defensively in Major League Baseball. What do you think that does for the game with the game? What's your feeling on that? Well, I think that you're seeing shifts because shifts are effective. Um, you know, I think the data is hard to deny that, you know, for certain types of hitters in particular, um, it does limit their effectiveness. Um, and I do think. In this era where the pitching is so good um, shifts can be something of a concern because we're looking for more offense in the game. I think people like offense in the game and uh, this change has been something that has played a role in the relative decline of offense. In the game. I think Commissioner Selig was very happy about 
labor peace for as long as he had it. And now right. with the collective bargaining agreement coming up, I know that you guys are doing everything you can to make sure that the game rolls along. We're having right. great interest in the game right now. Oh, There's yeah. a resurgence of baseball all over the country. Where do you see these negotiations going and how far along are you at this point? Well, we've made a really good start. Um, I think in the four or five that I've been involved in, we have more issues out on the table and have had more substantive meetings at this point in the season than ever before. And that's a great thing for everyone involved. Um, there's a certain amount of work that just needs to be done. Jackson can't make the catch. And the play is going to be at third. Not in time. Travis Shaw into third base. So the sooner you get at that work, uh, the better for everybody. I'll tell you what, with this result, home run and triple, Mr. <laughs> Commissioner, you've been fantastic here today, but I don't know what kind of luck you're providing the White Sox. I, I did better with the Red Sox in the last <laughs> half inning. I really did. Uh, they, they were happy to have me stay. <laughs> what, what really drew you to the game of baseball? You've spent so much time in the game. What, what is it that, that means so much to you? Well, you, you know, my, uh, uh, my dad was a really good athlete and a huge sports fan. We grew up in a house uh, where we watched Yankee baseball. I mean, that's what we did in the summertime. He was a huge sports fan in general, but he was a huge, huge baseball fan. Um, he passed his love of the game on to not only me, but my brother and sister as well. And, you know, I really got lucky to have an opportunity to work in and be involved in a game that you love is really something that most people would die for. And I feel really fortunate to have an opportunity to serve the game. Johnson on one strike misses down and away one ball and one strike 10 years down the line. What do you think the game of baseball is. Well you know I, I, I think that um, I would like to believe that 10 years from now we will oversee a period during which we've preserved the history and tradition of the game on the one hand. And on the other hand, we've allowed the game, as it always has, to change in response to the way our society is changing. And it's that balance. Allow it to change, but never interfere with the history and tradition that I think is the toughest part of the job. And, um, you know, we, we watch the way the game is played very carefully. We try to think about um, uh, changes that make sense to the game that will help keep it relevant going forward. And again, we always, always check every idea that we have against um, the need uh, to preserve our history and tradition. We have seen an absolute explosion of Latino players coming into the major leagues right. and drafted, developed, signed as free agents. On the other side of the coin, we've seen a decrease in African-Americans coming into the major leagues but you said there's some very encouraging signs with this last draft you want to go into that and explain to I will. Our viewers? I will um, you know we have invested industry money club money um, in a variety of programs that are designed to increase play in underserved areas largely minority areas those programs include things like reviving baseball in the inner city the, the, the RBI program the urban youth academies that we have in a number of major league cities around the country now our elite development program which fo focuses on minorities and in this past draft last year um, in June 25 percent of our first round was African American players um, many of them had connections to the programs that I, I just talked about Long fly ball, Adam Eaton, Austin Jackson. It's Jackson to make the play, and a sacrifice fly gets Shaw home. It's 4 1 Red Sox here in the third. And we're going to continue to invest in the programs. Um, just last year, uh, we committed to the funding of three more urban youth academies one in Kansas City, one in Dallas. Um, the one in Kansas City in particular, not to slight Dallas because it's going to be a great program as well. The one in Kansas City is really amazing in terms of the scope of the project that the Royals are undertaking. And we think that those programs are really important in terms of continuing to promote diversity. In the game. We've seen a uh, very much of a uh, oh, an outreach to Cuba mm -hmm. as a nation. Right. Now, we know there's many Cuban players in baseball right now. Do you see it being ever a wide open situation where they are drafted by our major leagues and so then the best players then get a chance to 
um, be drafted by anybody and spread around the major leagues instead of just a select few teams that have a great deal of money to pay for them. Right. I think that um, one of the priorities in this round of the negotiations is to get more um, equity in the international talent acquisition market. Um, I, I think our draft here domestically works great. It's really good for competitive balance, and I think that we need to have the same kind of system internationally that would apply to not just to Cuba, but all countries. Um, the, the, the trick with Cuba, uh, from our perspective, is, is sort of twofold. On the one hand, we want the best Cuban players, just like we want the best players from Japan to come here or have an opportunity to come here if that's what they want and play Major League Baseball. I think that the, the tricky piece is making sure that we don't interfere with the culture of baseball that exists in Cuba. Um, there's a great tradition of baseball in Cuba, and we don't want to be in a situation where, you know, uh, too many players come and we disrupt the, the development of really great players, like the one you have playing first base, uh, that has gone on there for many years. Johnson on three and two gets a pop-up foul. Again, how did you come up with this idea? Uh, about going to the ballparks and going to the staffs and talking to them because that Q&A earlier today watching you handle that with with the different employees and they ask you some tough questions. How did you come up with the idea to do that? Well, I, I think it's important to be out with the clubs. Um, you know, the, the, there's a lot of parts of our business that run from New York, our labor relations, you know, our, our national media deals and whatever. But it's important not to lose sight of the fact that the backbone of baseball has always been the 74 million, 75 million people that come to the ballparks and see our game live. Our live product is fantastic. And, you know, we don't do that in New York. Um, you know, it's the, it's the White Sox here and the Red Sox in Boston and the Cubs across town that sell those tickets. And you have to get out and, and, and see the employees that actually, um, you, you know, row the boat that makes the industry go forward. And every time I go to a club, it's unbelievable. You learn something. You always learn something about the business when you go out and have interaction with club employees. What's it been like for you taking over from a guy that I felt was, if not the most successful commissioner, uh, probably in the top two, mm -hmm. but I feel, and uh, Bud was a friend, so I feel that he did just an outstanding job. You take over now a game that's pretty healthy, right? and you want to keep it not only as healthy as it's been, but you want to build on it. How difficult is that for you, stepping in for a guy? It's pretty big shoes to fill. It is. You know, I, I, I feel fortunate, actually. Um, commissioner Seelig was a great commissioner. Um, I lived both in the before Bud and the after <laughs> Bud period, and I'll take after Bud every time. Um, you know, I remember what it was like. And uh, the way I see it is he left me 3-6 on that out of Brayu to Rollins, two away. Um, he left me uh, a sport in, in great condition in terms of the competitive balance in the game, the economics of the game. And I see it as an opportunity to build on the foundation that, that Commissioner Seelig left me. And the most important question is, do you want something off our prize shelf behind you? We've got a Paul Canerco statue. We can give you something for the road here. We've got a Sox truck. We have a gnome. We can't give you a gnome. The reason is that it's a watch gnome, and he protects all of the other gifts on yeah. our prize shelf. Can I tell you, that's a nice selection of items <laughs> that you have there, I have to say. You, like, this you like to flood <laughs> sunflower seeds, don't you? Really nice selection of items that you have there. I, it'd be hard to choose only one of those great <laughs> gifts. <I'll tell> you. <laughs> I was asking you earlier during the Q&A that, that you did with the staff about, about which player that you never got a chance to meet would you like to talk to? Uh, Who is that? Well, I told you that was easy. It's Mickey Mantle. I grew up, I told you, I grew up in a Yankee household. I have matured into neutrality um, once <laughs> I got the job. But, um, you know, I was a huge Mantle fan as a kid. And um, actually, my first ball game was at Yankee Stadium in August of 1968. And, you know, obviously at the very end of Mickey's career, um, the Twins uh, beat the Yankees the first game I saw three to two but it was still a thrill for me because Mantle hit two home runs one from each side of the plate um, it was the last time he ever hit two home runs in a game and uh, you know Mickey Mantle would be the one guy I'd like to meet two strikes from Johnson and this ball fouled away 
Also, is this the longest interview you have ever done? Well, this has been a long inning. It is not the longest <laughs> inning I've ever had. I still think we have uh, some time to go. I will tell you, you know, you talk about meeting people in the game. Um, last year at the All-Star Game, we, we, we had the opportunity. I had Henry Aaron, um, Willie Mays, Sandy Koufax, all in, and Johnny Bench, actually, all in a single room. And, you know, when you're a kid from a small town in upstate New York, um, that is quite an opportunity. <laughs> the pride of Rome, New York. Rob Manford, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, you very guys. Much. Absolute pleasure. It, pleasure to see you both. 4-1.